I'm Julia Greer. I guess the five minute um, countdown begins. Yep. Uh, I'm going to talk about a very mouthful of uh, words of a phrase of uh, materials by design, three dimensional nano architective metamaterials. Um, in the analogy I'd like to make to this is this. So 20 years ago, we had a choice of how do you take your coffee? You know, you either fall asleep or you actually have one coffee, you know, very seriously. Um, maybe 10 years ago, we've graduated to distinguishing it by color, black or white. And then of course today it's half cap, half decaf, milk, you know, goat milk, um, soy milk, latte, cappuccino. So the idea is that we've graduated into being able to fully design our coffee. So our materials world, which is, this is a busy plot, but it seems to be following the same trajectory in the sense that we used to be very good at making materials that are strong and heavy. So this is a plot of some kind of a mechanical strength or attribute as a function of density. So strong and heavy or lightweight and weak. And what we're not so good at is making materials that are simultaneously lightweight and strong, for example, right? So this is where this concept of nano architecture comes into play. And these are images that I'm showing you that the students in my lab created. And so these are 99.9% .9 air, very, very lightweight. And you can see how intricately designed they are into these crazy architectures. And they're somewhat bigger than the atomic scale, but they're below what your eye can resolve. That's why the pictures are all black and white. And for example, these materials are very interesting in the sense that they are um, supposed to be brittle. So they're kind of like bricks. They're kind of like your ceramic coffee mug that if you drop on the floor, it should shatter. But look what's happening to our materials. We're pushing on them and they're fully recovering. So they're completely tricking the world in the sense that, well, we all the people in the world know that we're supposed to be brittle, but look, we can deform and we can spring right back as though nothing is happening to us. You can see that they don't have to have homogeneous density. So in this bottom left video, for example, the bottom part is fully, fully compressing first. And then the top part just kind of going along for the ride, doesn't even know that it's being compressed. And then this fractal one, that's the last video on the bottom right. You can see that each beam is now made out of these self-similar uh, little pyramids. And you can see it's kinking, it's kinking, kind of hurts me every time I watch this video. It's about to snap and uh, it's about to snap, it's about to break and you can see it fully recovers. So these nanoarchitected materials have entirely unexpected properties. So here's another unexpected property. We made a rope, so imagine a hammock. Right, so we're stretching this rope and that's something that you would expect to see, right? So stretching this rope, no problem. But now we reverse the way that we're deforming this material and now we are going to push on a rope and every engineer will tell you, don't ever push on a rope. But this particular rope seems to be resisting deformation in either direction. So in this nano world, in this nano architecture world, you can make ropes that allow you to push on them. Turns out that in the world of these custom designed uh, materials, you can also possibly stop bullets. So here's one of these nano architect materials and we're shooting a bullet at it. So this is a lab at MIT. I don't know, it happened very fast. You can see there was a little, it's not a real bullet, but it's a very tiny bullet, nano bullet. Um, and you can see what happened and actually the material captured the projectile or it rebounded the projectile. So there's some future in terms of these lightweight materials also being able to deflect damage. Now here's a, very busy plot, but if you look at the column on the left and all the pretty colors, there's a lot of chemistry that's involved. And it turns out that these 3D materials can be made by using relatively simple chemistry. So here are my students made some metals, they made some ceramics, they made some metal oxides. And so uh, you can start making batteries out of them. You can start making useful materials out of them. So this is an example of these materials, for example, um, uh, serving as a battery. And so here we're lithiating such a battery. And if you look what happens in the course of lithiation, the pattern that we hid in there, we actually prescribed a pattern in there that evolves. Hopefully you can see an uncanny resemblance to the little logo that I'm showing um, on the right. Um, and so just to kind of bring it all together, I guess, the, so what, right? So you made all these pretty materials, like why, are, why, are, um, why would you, uh, why is this exciting? Well, here's why it's exciting. It's because we can now live in the world where there will be no hearing aids because we'll be able to directly write the cochlea phone. And your iPhone 83 will hold its charge for a year without having to recharge because we can make much more efficient batteries. The balloons will be able to be helium free. We'll be able to stop bullets, you know, with just our shirt. And then of course our latest and greatest pursuit is chocolate nano lattices, which are 100% taste, 99.9% .9 air and 0.01% calories.